So recently I sort of came across a surplus of iPod mini parts and as I was just sort of playing around with it seeing you know how it works I guess um, I noticed that the screen can be um, sort of taken apart if you will um, down to its base components it made me interested um, because I realised actually that the display, um, well the screen itself and the backlight are virtually two different assemblies. So what I've managed to come up with um, was a way of separating the two and actually being able to customise the, um, the backlight in pretty much any way you want. Um, and I'll show you what I've got going on right about now <laughs> so naturally when you are you know realizing that you have this power this potential to customize in any way you like um you're gonna draw dicks. that's just it's just a given um certainly is what i did um but i've got some coloring pencils uh, a sheet of paper as well as um, as well as this red folder um, I'm just gonna see what works what doesn't and um, yeah just sort of have a bit of a have a bit of a play around with this so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is swap in the red sheet I won't leave you hanging I'm really eager to share this um, the way I've done it is by simply removing the uh, screen it's very important to be very careful at this stage um, the back of the screen has a reflective sheet on it and that's just glued to the back frame of the display so you can carefully peel that back and that will reveal the backlight assembly underneath. Now this this white frame here is held to the uh, the front of the display with some adhesive so what I did was just slide a pry tool around the side just very carefully um, to sort of remove that adhesive and once I'd gotten that um, this plastic frame would just sort of lift up like that just like that and now here you'll see that we've got the diffuser for the backlight and um, what would have been in here originally was this and now this kind of resembles a piece of tracing paper um, and I only assume this is here to sort of help disperse the light across the back of the um, LCD which is here we don't want to touch this um, this piece here needs to stay exactly as it is but remove the piece of tracing paper if you like that goes in front of the plastic um, diffuser, I guess. And now be very careful. There are so many things to be very careful with. Um, so really, I'd recommend just doing this with a junk display. Uh, that's what I've done. Um, this display was just spare hanging around, so I don't really mind if I break this, because this does have some very real potential to completely destroy um, the display and therefore all of your hard work and uh, probably the iPod as well but um, not I personally I'm not really fussed about that so I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that down make sure not to stress the cable now you'll see here um, 
that is what I made to put in the screen. It's just a piece of paper. Um, if you want better light seepage, I guess, um, go ahead and use some tracing paper or uh, like in my case here, I'm going to be throwing in a piece of red plastic to change the colour of the backlight completely. So I'm going to want my piece of plastic to be exactly the same size as that little piece of tracing paper like stuff that we took out. Um, so we got quite a bit of cutting to do. So the installation is very much a uh, reversal of the removal. So piece of plastic goes in there. The display folds back over and you can leave the piece of tracing paper out if you want and just slot that down into place again like so it should just go back together quite nice you can see that new piece of red plastic in there with the residual adhesive left on the shiny piece uh, it's just, I'm sure it's got a technical name but you know we'll just call it the shiny piece um, give everything a good press down just to make sure it's all not going anywhere. There's the original screen that came with this iPod. Um, I haven't modified this one, so still got a good one where for when I inevitably break this. Ready to go. Ooh, very nice. Now one thing you might notice is the uh, the display looks a little bit corrupted there, and I've had this problem before. All we do is just reset the iPod and. So let's let that boot up and uh, just sort of see what it looks like, I guess. So, yeah, there you go, from cock and balls to... Hey, that looks all right. Um, there is, I think, a um, world first. I've not seen it around before. I did, I did have a look around forums and stuff, um, and just sort of generally on the uh, on the internet to see if anyone had done this before and to my knowledge they haven't and that might just be because there's not really a whole lot of interest I guess in doing something like this because it's really only a cosmetic uh, adjustment it doesn't really well it doesn't add to the functionality of it however I can now confidently say that I've got the only iPod mini with a red backlight um, and you know what it wasn't even too difficult to do um, so yeah, I, I, I hope, I hope this has proven, um, intriguing to, to see and, um, well, I hope you guys sort of stick around cause I've got, um, I've got an idea for a, uh, a future project that may well involve something a little bit similar to this. So, um. Yeah, stay tuned and I'll uh, I'll catch you around. Thank you so much for watching.